Okay, Barbara, welcome. Rooster, welcome. You're probably wondering, right? Rooster came from an auction. You've rescued him from an auction, right? It's your fault that he's in this picture. <laughs> we were talking about dead animals and Rooster <laughs> We were talking mid century onto the screen. Whatever. We were talking about mid century modern stuff. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so I was mentioning I got this stuffed rooster, this taxidermy rooster, and I brought it on here, and I, I had this perfect segue because uh, I got him at an auction, and I got him for the Here Are the Numbers. I got him for $14, and he sells on eBay for between $120 and $200. Oh, really? Are you going to yeah. sell him? Maybe one day. <laughs> I I'll guess he, he's I'll freak my neighbors crushed. out for a little bit longer. People actually stop in front of my house I, before I realized his value. Um, I had him sitting uh, on my patio. People would stop and take pictures because, yeah, anyway. So, um, yeah, I'll keep him for a little while because he's such a conversation piece. So, excuse me, buddy. You're going to have to go on a timeout here. I think he's kind of gross that you're touching him, but whatever. <laughs> I thought it would freak my cats out. They were like, whatever. It's all good. But it freaked me out when, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll walk by my front door and uh, it'll, I'll glance out of the patio and he's sitting there. I'll be like, what the? <laughs> Barbara freeze up for you guys, or am I frozen? Heck is that, Bert? I have to name him. Oh, you froze up on me. Okay, we're freezing on each other. <sighs> okay, now you're not frozen. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> we're back. If I freeze up, just proceed. Um, so can you tell us a little bit, your background is so fascinating. Can you tell us a little bit about it? <laughs> oh, I'm not sure where to start. I'll, I'll gloss over a bunch of stuff. I, like uh, your, your selling sort of reseller background. Yeah, you my reseller background. Yeah. I started selling. Start. What's that? Didn't you say you started in ninety eight? Ninety six. I started okay. selling online in ninety six. Prior to that, I lived in Europe for many years, and when I moved back to the states, uh, I was a I was a, an investigative journalist, um, and I always had something else on the side. Like ever since I was thirteen, I was selling stuff door to door when I was thirteen. So I always had an entrepreneurial bent, uh, and I started designing coffee mugs with emoticons on it, believe it or not, smiley faces, but before they were emoticons, when they were just like the little smiley faces. Right, right. And, and mouse pads. It was coffee mugs, mouse pads, and something else. Selling them on eBay. I had them printed okay. up, shipped to my little condo, and sold them on eBay. That was 96 before the internet was, you know, before Al Gore discovered the internet. Um, <laughs> Invented it. Invented right? the internet, right? Yes. So, and then uh, ever since then, it's just sort of morphed and grown. And um, I started a publishing company in 2002, 2002, wow, 13 years ago, 14 years ago, <clears throat> doesn't seem that long ago, publishing, I, I was a writer in the global, in the energy industry, so uh, energy issues, wind power, solar power, oil and gas, et cetera, and it sort of morphed into um, selling information products in that industry online, other people's products, matching them up with um, people who I'd interviewed, conference lists that I had from conferences I produced, and then I started producing my own content out of there. I produced some conferences, and then I produced, uh, I've got a few hundred different reports on topics ranging anything in the energy industry, and I built some back-end systems so everything was automated, so I only had an operations manager, and then I took those systems and branched out into biotech, pharmaceutical, and technology. Oh, wow. So that's how I started online. Okay, so you started selling digital media before before anyone else was, before a lot of people were doing that. Uh, yeah, I mean, back then, right now, we have all these great tools and really easy, cheap ways to, back then, there was, there was no Gumroad or Constant Content, there was nothing, there was nothing. Yeah, yeah. You, you really had to, I spent a lot of money developing a back-end system just to be able to have an affiliate program uh, to have other people sell my products. It was a, it was a whole, it was a wild, wild west. Yeah, um, yeah. We're so, just um, we're thinking about implementing Infusionsoft in Scanner, yeah. and all the stuff Infusionsoft can do, like even the system we have now, can't do it. But I mean, there's so much stuff you can do now. But back then, it was all wild, wild west. You had documents. To, you wanted with me. something done. Yeah, if if you wanted something done, you had to develop it yourself. You had to right. have a developer do it for you. So that was that. And then fast forward, uh, I took took that money and I invested in real estate and the stock market. <laughs> <laughs> Good timing on that. <laughs> yep, I bought a bunch of property at the top of the market. I bought the stock market at the top of the market. You know, I'm not, we all know the outcome of that. Everybody's uh, got their own story with that. But right. at the end of the crash, I had this great opportunity to decide, it's just a couple of years ago, three years ago, 
Well, heck, <clears throat> what else? If I, you know, I, I just want to feel good. I feel kind of yucky now. This whole crash thing kind of burnt me out, and I feel drained. I like to buy stuff, and I like to sell stuff. So I'll just buy stuff and sell it and have, you know, some fun doing it and kind of take a break from life. And I can't ever have a hobby and have it not turn yeah. into a business. It's mm -hmm. it profitable. It's just an ADD entrepreneur thing, I suppose. So um, I discovered auctions. Don't even know how. I fell upon a website. I was terrified to go to auctions for about a year because, one, I'm kind of an introvert, and the energy there is very... You just made a face. I, I know. I'm like, you're an introvert. <laughs> but large groups of people, large groups of people, all that energy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think a lot of introverts are just highly sensitive people, and they take in other people's energy. <laughs> yeah. And the um, the auctioneers are trained to manipulate the room, and I didn't want to put myself in that situation and get caught up in it and, you know, make mistakes and bid too much and blah, blah, blah. So I did a ton of online research, and um, the first thing I bought was a German meat slicer from a local auction online. What? I did all of my research. I'm sorry, what is, like, the difference between a German meat slicer and, Well, it was like a German a brand. I think it was a, okay. I think it was a, a Merkel. I guess and, they're um, good at making meat slicers. It was a high-quality meat slicer. I think it was Merkel. And I checked on eBay, and I did all my research. And then um, I went to preview it, because I didn't want to buy it sight unseen, because it was electric. And um, I won the bid online, and I went and picked it up. And I put it on Craigslist. And about 10 days later, I made 50, 60 bucks on it. OK. I thought, I thought, wow, OK. I just bought something I know nothing about and sold it and made some money. I wonder what other op opportunities are at auctions. And fast forward three years, and I've got a ton of bids in a, um, an office liquidation auction tonight. After I get off this, I'm going to update my bids. And I'll be winning a ton of office supplies, hopefully, that okay. are brand new. Brand new. Inbox is brand new. I already wow. did the research this afternoon for about an hour. Um, I know the auction house, and I know that they're pretty accurate with their description and pictures, so I don't have to go down there and preview it. And um, okay. I'll pick everything up tomorrow and take it over to my local prep guy and it'll all go on Amazon. Wow. So can you tell us a little bit about the HEPA filter, <laughs> the HEPA filter situation? HEPA filter, this little guy. Here. This little guy. I used to actually, I used to work for a company, an e-commerce company, and we sold HEPA filters amongst other things. So. I didn't even know what it was. About yeah. two months ago, I went to a live auction and there was, an, oh, well, we should, we should tell people how I got involved with Amazon because that, that's kind of the middle piece. Okay. So about two years ago, I went to an auction to pick up some stuff I bought, and there was a guy there dropping off bed sheets, like brand new bed sheets, a, a bunch of them, to consign them to the auction. So, of course, I start talking to him, and at that point, I had, I've been selling on Facebook groups, and I, uh, I've got my own following on Facebook. I've got about 12, 1,300 people who follow me now. Uh, just in Barbara's Funky Treasure, which is a local group that people buy, like my stuffed rooster, for example. Right. Um, so I said, well, you know what? I, I, I wonder if I could sell those. Can I buy a dozen? He sold me a dozen pretty much at his cost. I posted them, and they were gone within a day and a half, just gone. And I thought, well, that's wow. interesting. Why don't I go source these somewhere? So I found some suppliers, and I ordered them in wholesale. And I started a company called Posh Linens. I have a trailer, and I've got signs and everything. <laughs> <laughs> signs? I have, wow. I, have, I have magnet signs on the side. have a website. And all I have a website, poshlinens.com, yeah. right? So, and then I branched out from sheets to related um, items, because when someone picks up sheets, they might need a comforter right. or a quilt set or blankets, um, snuggies, whatever, is pillows. I just want to stop you for one second, because one thing I love about your story is that you're so creative about how you sell stuff. Like, you're never just like, oh, well, I'm an eBay seller, so I'm only going to sell on eBay. Or, I, or now that I do Amazon, I don't do anything else. You have sold live. You do live selling, right? Yeah, I go, I go to farmer's markets, right? You do website you have your own website you do amazon you do ebay you do craigslist which i've heard a lot of people go i don't want to do craigslist i'm scared you do that okay. and um i imagine there's other places you you just yeah, offer up you know, it's, facebook it's you have your facebook, facebook yeah i've got a few different groups now on facebook i have a posh linens facebook.com slash posh linens uh so towards the end of last year middle of last year i thought okay things are settling down a little bit i moved into a new place 
that I had criteria for if I could have the perfect living environment that would support my business, including where it was located, that I could have trailers on it, there's no HOA, it's got an RV gate, open floor plan, blah, yada, yada, yada. So I rented this place a little over a year ago. And um, I moved in and I thought, okay, what's the next level? Well, Amazon's got a lot of customers. So how do I sell my bedding on Amazon? How, not, not how do I sell my bedding? How do I create a brand on Amazon for the bedding? So I figured out how to do that. And there's some requirements you have to have with Amazon to like register the brand your brand. registry and all that so stuff. So I registered Posh Linens and mm -hmm. I'm now in the pro and I, and I didn't just dump all of my inventory in there. I'm still testing it out. I've got Western sheets up there, black sheets, like um, niche pro USA sheets, Marine sheets, um, Marine Corps sheets. So I'm testing some things out. I've got some blankets that are part of bundles with a couple of other products so I can own the listing. Um, so um so your posh linen is that white label like you have that you order this wholesale and they put your brand in yeah i call it well i could but that would be a half a container and about a thirty-five thousand dollar investment which is okay but i i like incremental growth for right. me um and until amazon gets to that level i call it poor man's poor girls white poor girls <laughs> right so i had cards uh, printed and in the packages there's a little there's a little sleeve inside I uh -huh. take their card out I put my card in so it's private private girl or uh, so you uh, do your yeah. own white label I do my own white label that's very creative I love it I, it's funny you call it creative and I just think it's like common sense the only thing about like the concern about that shows. is when you do that when you um, essentially change the you become the manufacturer so yeah. you have to just change your business insurance, make sure you have liability and all that to be able to. Uh, all taken care of it. I've got a great right. account. I have a great team around me. I believe in building up a really strong infrastructure first to build upon. Right. So, yeah, I've got, I've got a great team around me. Cool. So, so that yeah. is um, that is the one thing. But, um, but, yeah, that's a totally legitimate thing to do as far as I know. I've seen those linen things with the little cards that they slip in. Oh, yeah. You got your own card. Yeah, cool. you just put your own card in there. Yeah, very clever. So you're well. Since then, since then, I found a couple of other manufacturers to, and they beat the price, the same quality, but they beat the price, and they're closer to me geographically, so shipping is less. Right. And not, I, I discovered a manufacturer not that long ago, a few months ago, that will actually ship my orders directly to Amazon for mm -hmm. me. Woohoo! So I'm I'm incrementally growing Posh Linens with my exit strategy of selling the business. Right. That's my desire and end result is to sell posh linens. So I'm building building the value up so that when I sell it, it can be a certain percentage of the earnings EBITDA. Um, so I'm building it to a certain level so I can sell right. it. Right. Sure, that makes sense. So I have an exit strategy. I don't I don't want to be doing farmers markets and, and whatever. I'm just building the following, building the brand, and building the income in order to build the value of the company. So how do you do farm? Talk to me about the farmers market thing. So I'm curious about how that all goes down. You, I hook up my trailer to my minivan, I load up a bunch of sheets, and I take it to the market, and I put them on a table, and I sell them. You don't have to register or anything? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> yeah, you have to register. Yeah, you have to register. You, yeah, you, do. Yeah, okay. yeah, you have to register. You call them up. And there's a mama's market uh, close. It's pretty good. Um, and then I'm just pretty decent at marketing. You know, I've got all the, and I always added value, so I give away, if anybody buys sheets, I try to um, sell them quantity, so I give them right. a discount. They buy two or three, right. and then I give away an eye mask that I got at the dollar store, which of course I went and found a wholesale store for and got it for about thirty-five percent less than the dollar store. Okay, so that's what sets me apart from anybody else selling bed sheets. And I know my product, and I buy the the high end, the best product. That there's a lot of different levels of bed sheets and manufacturers out there. I get the best with the six pieces. It's the same um, factory that makes the Costco brand that they sell for 119 when they do their traveling roadshow. So okay. I know my product really well. Um, and, and yeah, so I do pretty good. Okay. So, um, okay. So you, the other thing I love about your auction story is that you, you both source things at auctions, but you also network and talk to people. And yeah, the HEPA so, filter. Gotten, so that's the, so tell us the HEPA filter story. Right, the HEPA filter story. So this just happened a couple months ago and I was at an auction and there was, and now, okay, so now I'm, I 
you know, I've got my feet wet. I started in Amazon last September. I, I took a whole month off of everything just to learn Amazon because, you know, learning to do FBA is kind of, to me, it was like going through a grad program. Holy cow. It's just the learning curve is you really got to commit. So I just completely immersed. That's just my style. And um, I, I started selling toys for Christmas just because that was the thing to do. So right. I and to get my feet wet and I did RA. I really wanted to dig in and learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. So I go to an auction and now I start sta scanning at auctions, which I, I haven't done for years because I didn't even know. I knew nothing about like FBA right. and Amazon. So scan what, huh? Yeah. So now I'm scanning stuff, right? And um, turns out there's some other Amazon sellers in this auction. And there's this box of these things. There's about 14 of them in the box. These, they're, it's just kind of small. And I scanned it. I'm like, okay. I, I, I did my due diligence. It's got the keeper graph is solid. This price is solid. Amazon's on it. But if I can get it for this price, then I can just throw them in and see what happens. Because it's only 14 of them, right? Right. So I buy them for an okay price. And a little bit later, this little old grizzled guy comes up to me, Fabian, is his name and this guy is like an old school hustler there's nothing about online he has a dumb phone not a smartphone and uh he says hey i can sign those to the auction uh do you need any more so now i i opened up amazon and, and i double check and i look and i thought well the, the rank is really good if i get him for the right price mm -hmm. so i said well, what do you got and he goes well i have an entire storage unit full of them about 28 cases with 100 in each case it's like, all right, I'll buy two cases from him for 40 bucks a piece, 40 cents each, and right. I'm out, and I sent one case in Amazon, and they promptly lost it, and paid me. He got me. reimbursed. Yeah. <laughs> but you didn't learn anything, so it's like you got that money, but you didn't really learn right. about the market. So, I, so the second one, I hired little girls across the street, I think. I hired somebody to actually put labels on the 100 in the second box. Okay. And um, sent it in, and... Uh, it, there was a hundred of them and in four days they were sold four days from hitting the warehouse. I thought this is interesting. So I, I called up Fabian and I said, Fabian, um, you probably want that storage unit empty. You've got some fees coming up. You know, if you re up for another month, how about I take those off your hands? And he goes, sure. Make me an offer. He had 22 cases and I paid him $400 and he delivered it to my front door. He, he delivered it and unloaded it to my house. Wow. And the cool thing is that he's such a great hustler. Every time I meet with him, he's got something else in the van for me. I told him what I do. I said, I sell new stuff on Amazon. His, his thing is tools. He loves tools. He goes into Home Depots and Lowe's, and he'll buy the clearance stuff and the closeouts, and he'll make an offer to the manager to buy everything. Right. So he ends up with stuff he doesn't know what to do with. So now he knows what to do. He brings it to me. So he brought me these jacuzzi, two of them, some sort of PVC piping, branded jacuzzi, oversized but really light. And I said, well, I don't know anything about these. What do you want for them? He says, five bucks a piece. I looked them up. They're selling for $108 on Amazon. Uh, after fees and everything, it's like $74. So I was like, okay, I'll take those. And then he had some solar lights that I flipped locally. Um, doubled my money. I paid five bucks a piece, and I sold them for 10 in just like a week on my Facebook group. So there's opportunities everywhere. I guess that's why I'm telling you this, not to brag, to tell right. you that it's not just about going online to an auction and doing bids, but networking with the people who buy and sell at auctions because we're all hustlers. Right. You know, so we all have other stuff going on, and I might have an outlet to sell something that someone else doesn't and vice versa. I'm not, I'm not a real big eBay fan. There's nothing wrong about eBay. I made some money on eBay, but I have so many other things going on mm -hmm. that I just don't have time for it. So if there's collectibles that I come across, I'll flip them to an eBay seller. Right. Where they can make some money and I'm not holding on to it. Yeah. It's Unless great it's to have those relationships because then it really is a win-win because everybody's happy. They get something good to sell and you don't have to deal with it and then you have forged a relationship. That's awesome. I, I want to show you a couple of other things I got. Okay. Just, this is show and tell with Barbara. Show and tell. <laughs> Start okay. See that? goes from there. What's this? This is an executive adjustable golf putter set. Okay. With this, uh, telescoping, right? It's really cool, right? Yeah, and I gotta get those in for Father's Day. Two, oh, they're already in, honey. Okay, you just saved <laughs> one back for us. Thank you. Oh, no, I saved some. I saved some back here because I'm wholesaling them locally as well. Oh. Um, 
and I didn't want to send all, I have oh, so many of them. That. You're whole, so you're selling your retail outlets? On Craigslist. I'll just go on Craigslist or I'll walk into a, um, we have a lot of resorts here and it's Arizona. So okay. people have been playing golf while it's snow in the other parts of the country. And um, so I go in there and say, hey, I've got a case of these for 24 per case, X amount of dollars. Um, I flipped some to a couple of other uh, Amazon sellers who wanted to bundle them with other things. Okay. So these, I got three full pallets. I mean, oh full pallets of yeah. these out of a lot, right? Uh, and then this was a different auction where it was a gentleman who would passed away who was a clock fixer, an orologist, H-O-R-O-ologist. Okay. <laughs> and, and all of his clocks, these cook clocks, uh, these watches, these watch parts, everything that this gentleman had, plus cases and cases of orology books, how to fix clocks, how to fix watches, uh, yeah. probably about about 15 cases. And I think I paid 15 or $20 per case, and there were 8 to 10 books in each case. Now, what I did was uh, I a lot of them didn't have, because they were older, they don't right. have right so i i surreptitiously at this auction i i th was worried that there were i knew there were ebay sellers there i was worried there were some amazon sellers but i don't think there were at this point so i searched just for two or three titles i think one from a couple of different boxes and they were selling between 59 and 119 on amazon because right. they're out like, of print yeah and the rank the rank was super high like 1.5 million and i thought but if i can get them for the right price yeah so i did i i they, they had it. Um, they bid off all of the all of the boxes. It wasn't one money; it was uh, per box. So the bid went up to like I want it for twenty, and they say which boxes do you want? And I just did this, which means give them all to me. So I bought all the boxes for twenty bucks each. Not, right. Right. Plus buyer's premium, and so I mailed them in, and I, I didn't even at first I did um, merchant fulfill because I wasn't sure if they were going to sell. And like I listed a couple, just a couple in the morning, and by the afternoon they'd sold. I thought, well, this is interesting. I said the I rest. Think, of um, one of the things about books and some other categories too is that rank is definitely helpful, but it's like sometimes rank tells a story, and so something can have a really high rank because nobody ever buys it. And there are definitely things like that on Amazon that you're like, why? You know, this is not something anybody's going to buy. But there's other things that are super duper niche oriented yeah. that people who are into horology or orology, however you say that, like there's not that many people that are hardcore into that, but the ones that are, are really into it. So the reason why those books have a high rank is because there's not, it's not a bestseller, but the people who want it, want it. So I think well, that's and the, really and the books were about how to fix, so, so guys who have businesses fixing clocks, yep. fixing watches. These were textbooks on how to fix a specific type of watch from the Black Forest region of Germany. Right. I mean, they were so niche. Um, yeah, beautiful graphics too, check that out. I mean, is that just beautiful? That's anyway. neat, yeah. So anyway, these are just a couple of auction buys in the past three, four months, four months from the beginning of this year. Okay. Yeah, I think from the beginning of this year. So that just gives you an idea of some of the stuff you can find in an auction, and you Talk never know. Talk to us a little bit about how do you like how do you find auctions and and what are some of the pitfalls? Okay, uh, pitfalls of finding. Okay, well, I'll start with how let's do you start find with auctions. Pitfalls of like if you go to your first auction, so right. you found one. So let's first talk about how do you how find, find an auction? Okay, so first I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna give you guys a freebie. Go here and download the free guide. It's called so Easy. Cute easyauctionprofit.com very low tech. Is that your site? That's your site, right? It is as of this afternoon. I registered this URL. All right. And it is it will go to a download uh, Gumroad site where it's free. Easy Auction Profit, no S on the end, just easyauctionprofit.com. Okay, you just put your price in a zero? Yeah, just put it in a zero and download that and that is um, Nine secrets, and, and in there I cover some of what you just asked, and we'll go over that real quick. How to find auctions. Well, Google is your friend. Or just Google is you your just friend. just look up local auction house? Is that what you look up? Well, like you don't want to look up. Right? Where, where are you located, Cordelia? I'm in Atlanta. Okay, so you will search for auction house Atlanta, but I know Atlanta's pretty big. 
So maybe there's a subsidiary or a, like Shamley, you know, which is the town I live in. Exactly. Right. So you want to look up um, auction house or auction and then the nearest city that you're close to. OK. And then so I just found a thing on Yelp that says the best 10 best auction houses in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> Boom. Boom. So but, there you so, go. <laughs> that didn't take yeah, long. That's, but I, I always question Yelp, you know, who says they're the 10 best? Right. But right? at least so you a place to start researching. Absolutely. The thing is, if they're on Yelp, just consider this. I do well at auction houses that has less, have less competition. So uh, the, the ones that aren't on Yelp and the ones that aren't widely publicized because they're not very good at marketing, so um, I'll do like a smaller town like Prescott, Arizona, or maybe a cowboy town to find auctions that maybe not a whole lot of people know about. People, the, the auctions that don't have an e email list and that don't have an online auction part to their auction. So you have to go there live. So, so, so one of my questions is, so some of the, like this one place, actually they're in, they're right down the street from where I live. But they do like antiques and stuff like that. So I wouldn't go to that auction because I sell new stuff, right? So do you kind of vet maybe. that or would I just go check it out and see if maybe they You want to go check it out because okay. a lot of auction houses, they'll have different rings. So the auction house where I got the, um, the books, uh, they have three different rings. They had furniture, they have collectibles, antiques, and they have the jewelry, right? And you can find stuff and what, what you don't think – yeah, just because it says an antique auction, I would still go check it out. Okay. If for no other reason than it's up the street from you, right. and that you can just go to an auction and sit and hang out and get the feel for it. Um, and now this place, like, I think they're really just a consignment store because I've been there. But so you actually go to, like, the live auction where they're, you know. Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes. Uh, I do a lot of online auctions as well. But the caveat with online auctions is – Every auction buyer has a story about where the photograph and the description was not what they thought they were getting. Okay. So you have to go to the auction house and preview. You have to go and preview until you've gotten the feel for that auction house for its quality of photos, consistency, and integrity level. So, um, because the other thing I'm noticing here is that, like, some of the auction houses are in a very affluent part of town. So I probably would want to stay away from those and go to the ones that are in the, the boom. See, see, and I, I, would, I would question your decision to stay away from them because they're in an affluent part of town. Why would you think that? Because I would think stuff would be more expensive. Stuff that you may not want. Ah, because those HEPA filters, the people in Buckhead are not going to want a box of HEPA filters. That's right. So, so you, actually, you like never, ever know what is going to end up at an auction because think about it. An auction house might have consigned to it the entire estate of somebody who's passed right. away. Now, not all of their stuff is going to be – maybe that, that estate, uh, maybe on the side they had a small business selling diapers. Who knows, right. right? So it could be their entire stock of diapers is in that auction right next door to the antiques. And all those people that are there to buy antiques do not want to buy diapers. You, you could shoot a fish in a barrel. Yeah, you could own that auction because they're not looking for new stuff. They're looking for an, an antique for their living room. Right. right. Or for their no, I wouldn't discount any auction okay. because it's in a different part of town. Any, I would, I would be careful not to judge. It's an auction. Just go. Check okay. You really never know what you're going to find or who you're going to meet. One of the things that, uh, one of the lessons that a lot of people who are really into arbitrage say, retail arbitrage, is that, like, it's better to, if you have a day to shop, it's more strategic to, like, go to every Walmart than it is to go to every store in a one-mile radius. Because then you'll get to know the inventory. So you're basically saying kind of a similar thing about auctions where, rather than, like, every weekend going to a different auction house, it would be better to pick maybe one or two and go to those consistently and get to know them and then branch out? Is, does that sound right or no? I wouldn't compare the two strategies. They're just different strategies. And there are auctions pretty much every night of the week here in, Am or here in Phoenix. Okay. So you can literally, you know, for people still working a 9-to-5, you could go to an auction on a Tuesday night 
and pick up some stuff to send it to Amazon or to put on Craigslist or put on eBay or whatever. It's not just weekends. In fact, the weekends are probably not the best time to go to auctions because the people who have real jobs are not going during okay. the week. They're going during the weekend when they have off. So you want to go on the opposite time. Okay. So, but I guess what I'm saying is that like auction house X, whatever it's named, you want to go to that one auction house, like every time they have an auction to get okay. to know the auction house or do you wait and see if they have your stuff that you like and then go repeatedly? Um, if I feel like going to an auction, I say, what's tonight? Thursday? Okay, I'm going to go down to that auction tonight. But I'm, that, That's okay. the level of my decision making. I, I see what but you're, you're saying. Because you say you're every, developing right. relationships with one auction house. So I'm guess I'm asking you, are you oh, going because to that I same to auction all. house all the time or well, are you going I go to, to all a different one all the time? So as you go to auctions, I mean, this is this is my income. So I go to all auctions. Okay. Uh, or I did for a couple of years. And the more you go and get to know the people at the auction house, um, you get to a point when you buy enough stuff, they give you what's called a permanent bidder number. So okay. EJ's, I'm 555, five, five, five. I'm 286 at 81, I'm 4559 at Auction Nation. So I have a permanent bidder number. I, I don't, when I go in, I don't have to put a down payment down, I have to check in, I have to get a bidder card, none of it. I can walk in and bid on from the parking lot if they can hear me bid on whatever's up so as you okay. incorporate this into i mean you have to be serious about going to auctions to get to that level but right. there are people who this is what they do and we're it's the same core group of people locally you see at every single auction okay um, so that's a that's like a really committed level of going to auctions but what i just would suggest for somebody new to going to auctions is start consistently looking at online auctions even if you don't bid Right, and I have in that um, download, I listed five or six different online auction sites that you can go to. I think like, oh gosh, A through H, whatever that is, right? And also search Craigslist for one-time auctions, right? Okay. And just, start, just start getting a feel for what's, what's up for auction, um, how many people are bidding on it. And some auction houses have a better email list, so they'll have higher bids. And some auction houses are really bad at online marketing, so they have lower bids. And okay. every auction house is different. It's just how much time you invest in researching each house. Okay. I don't know if I answered so you, your question. That did. That was perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to ask you about is um, you've mentioned a few terms about your permanent bidder number. And I think you talked about like if the cost is like $50 and then there's a thing that you refer to that's an extra fee. And so can you so explain some, that a little some bit? Of the financials, so some of the financials when you're first getting started, here's what you Down need to do. payment, you talked about when you need it. So talk a little right. bit about the logistics. Yep. So look at it from the auction. Here's how they make their money at auction houses. They charge the consigner, which is the person who gives the product to be sold. They charge them a fee. And then they charge the buyer, the bidder, a fee. So they're double dipping. They get paid twice, which is totally normal in the auction industry. Right. Every uh, It's called a buyer's premium. And every auction house has it. And every auction house is different. So and whether it's online or offline. So you got to make sure when you sign up for a, a go to like auctionzip.com and sign up for an account auctionzip.com and there are auctions all across the states different states at auction zip okay and when you sign up the auction and you say i want to bid at this auction you have to register for a bidder number and give them your credit card and here's why there are people if they didn't take some sort of down payment or you know like put a hundred dollars on your card and take it off after the auction right. like, they could just go and bid on a bunch of stuff and then disappear and now right. this auctioneer is stuck and has to re-auction this so his point right. of view Right. There has to be, you have to have some skin in the game. Yeah, that makes you sense. Get back. And when at a live auction, when you go and they don't know you, you have to go to the window, they get your contact information, they take a picture of your driver's license, and then uh, you have to give them either a hundred, it's usually a hundred dollars, right? And okay. they hold it for you and they attach it to your application. And then when you, when you buy something, is that cash or do cash. you go to auctions with cash or can you pay with a credit card? You can pay with a credit card too, but they require uh, a down payment of some sort when you go to a physical auction house. So that they know you're not going to bid and then scoot out the door. Right. right? Um, and then they give it back to you at the end and you can pay with whatever form you want. And okay. also when, uh, if you've got a reseller certificate, folks, you've got to make sure the auction house has a copy of that before you bid. You can't, when, when they, once they print the invoice, you can't say, can you redo this with right. my reseller certificate? You have to have it in their hands, whether it's an online auction or a live auction, before you bid on anything. Okay, 
So they, so now is there a benefit? Is there ever a benefit if you pay cash versus credit card or does it not? Some auctions, some auctions, uh, like there's a local one on Sunday here that, um, if you pay cash, then it's a 10% buyer's premium. If it's credit card, then it's 13% to cover their merchant fee. Okay. And so, so you can, sometimes you can negotiate the online auctions. It's pretty much straightforward. You know, it's, they charge your card after the online auction is done, but the live auction houses, a lot of them will have a different buyer's premium, whether you pay cash or debit or credit. So your buyer's premium is essentially the fee that you're paying to have the privilege of buying your mer their merchandise. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're, I mean, we all pay that whatever store we go to, it's just, they're telling you what it is basically. I mean, we all pay that fee. Well, and you have to you have to make sure that you've got and here's the emotional part of uh, going to a live auction or even an online auction because sometimes it can get pretty heated if there are a couple bidders bidding right. each other up at the very last second and trying to snipe each other. You have to know what your number is. So, for instance, tonight there's um, there's a, there's a couple of boxes of um, highlighters and markers and um, Crayola colored pencils that I'm on, right? And there's at least one other guy on it, maybe two. Um, I know my number. I did my research on Amazon after fees. I know what I can get. I know how much I want to spend or how much I want to make on those. Uh, plus considering how much it's going to cost me to get them to Amazon. Right. And I multiply that out by now the pictures are, I didn't have time to preview it, but the pictures are these big boxes with all these brand new piled in there. I don't know how deep it goes. So I'm doing a little calculation. The box looks like it's like 18 inches by 12, by right? So some of it is guesswork, and uh -huh. I make sure that I've got enough of wiggle room in my final bid that I can that that'll compensate for the guesswork, and that it'll add the buyer's premium onto it. So let's say I know my top bid on that lot is fifty-five dollars. That auction charges thirteen percent buyer's premium. Plus, I got to go pick it up, but I'm pro I'm going to win a bunch of other stuff at that auction. So it's not just picking up a box of colored markers. Right. I'll have, there's several pallets of things that I'll probably end up winning. Um, and then, you know, getting it into Amazon itself and the cost of getting it in Amazon. So you have to come up with your number and then stick with that number. At the last minute, don't let anybody snipe you up to $65, $70 because that little bit right there, it, it makes it not worth your while to do that lot. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So you sort of have to um, sort of figure out what your number is, when, when it's worth it for you. Yeah. Um, and don't waver when you get caught up in the heat of the, the bidding. No, it's just about, it's that, that final dollar amount. Unless it's something I really want, like a, a stuffed rooster, in which case. <laughs> well, and I also love, you know, uh, what you said before about how, let's take those uh, that office supply lot. You could theoretically talk to the person who consigned those and maybe they have more of those and then you well this that. was this was actually and this is a great segue into talking about the different kinds of auctions which is okay. also some um, easyauctionprofit.com i also listed those oh great so, so you can go back and and kind of review because i know i talk pretty quickly um so i've got uh, attending local live auctions online auctions storage auctions don't don't discard um storage auctions because here's you don't actually have to buy the, the uh, storage the stuff in the storage auction to go to a storage auction. You know that? So when I was selling when I was selling furniture, I would go to these storage auctions and I would let everybody bid on an auction or on a unit that had a whole bunch of stuff in it, but one or two things I wanted. After the guy won it, I would go to him and say, "I'd like to buy that and that from you, please." And I buy those two pieces. Very clever, right? And then I walk away with the two pieces I want without having to clean out any storage unit. And they walk out having and they, sold some of their locker that they just bought. It's win-win, right? And I don't have to stay for the entire auction. I just identify what I, you know, see that I want, and then I'm done. So liquidation auctions, which is what this one is tonight. Mm -hmm. This auction tonight is actually a, um, an, uh, a business that went out of business. So it's all of their business supplies. There's whiteboards in there, um, a bunch of, uh, everything is brand new in boxes. So it must have been a pretty decent size bid to their toilet paper, cases and cases of toilet paper and hand towels and their Keurig coffee for the coffee maker by cases of it. So um, this is a liquidation of a specific company. So everything okay. is pretty much office related. Okay. Right, including office desks and chairs, et cetera. 
So but you don't, but don't discount it. Oh, that's just an that's an office liquidation. It's not that far from my house, and it doesn't hurt me to go through and scan through and say, oh, yeah, you know, at first you, you could discount things and say, oh, well, that's just office stuff. I don't want office stuff. But you have to like let that thought push that to the wayside mm -hmm. and look at, the, it, look at them anyway. Look at the listings anyway, because it turns out there's some platinum in that auction if I get it to the right price. Right. So don't prejudge any auction because you think it's in a different part of town or it just might be antiques because you don't know what they're going to be selling and you don't know who you're going to meet. Okay. Good advice. Um, so what about, um, what about if you, if they say, okay, this is a box of brand new highlighters and you get there and you pick up the box and there's like half the box is not brand new highlighters. Do you have any recourse? Uh, no, most auctions are as is, where is, and it's my responsibility to preview. Okay. Now, auction houses allow you one or two days ahead of time or even that same morning to go in and preview what you're buying. So it's my responsibility by not previewing this. If these are all like 20-year-old markers and they're all dried up, my bad. Right. So one thing you mentioned earlier in this show, I just want to say again, is that part of some of these online auctions you're doing, you're you've had a relationship like you've bought from this auction house before yeah so you know that there's a good chance that if they say they're all brand new highlighters that you you have you may not have previewed this one but you yeah. you know at the beginning you previewed a bunch before yes. you developed kind of your sense of which ones to trust and which ones not so yes. um that's a really good technique to to preview them um Sorry, I just, I totally lost my train of thought. That's okay. I, I, I can share. I can keep sharing. Yeah, um, please keep sharing. So, Absolutely. yeah, you don't be afraid of buying pallets because some other people might be afraid of buying pallets mm -hmm. and that'll give you the competitive edge against them. These, um, these adjustable golf putter sets, cases and cases of them, were pallets. And I know what some of you are thinking right now. I don't have a warehouse. I can't store it. I have an HOA. There are ways around that, kids. If you guys have gone on Deal Diva on um, Facebook, you'll see where I had 2,000 pounds of wholesale, three pallets show up at my house and no room to put it. And it was going to rain the next day. So I rented a budget truck, backed both of the trucks up to each other, rolled the pallets onto the budget truck, and spent the next 48 hours in the budget truck processing that shipment. So there are always ways to do it. Always, always. You can, you can rent a storage unit. A lot of storage facilities have a special dollar for the first month. Rent the biggest unit you get. Go to Home Depot and rent their $19.99 um, a pickup truck, real big pickup truck for 20 bucks for 75 minutes and go pick up your pallets and deliver them to the storage unit. There's so many ways around um, what you think might be keeping you from doing a larger buy. Okay, and he then here's another trick. So let's say you've got some pallets or you buy a bunch of stuff and you want to cherry pick the stuff off that you can flip right away. Get your money back. So you cherry pick the stuff off, get it up on Craigslist, get it on Facebook, Get your money back as quickly as possible in any way possible. And then whatever, let's say, I'm focusing on new stuff now. I'm not doing used. But eBayers love the collectible stuff. I'm not doing that. So I might buy a pallet of stuff or buy out a store. I take off the stuff I know I can sell on Amazon and then, or I know I already have buyers for. And then I'll, I'll repackage a pallet up or half a pallet and send it back to an auction house. Pay oh. them a commission to sell it off. Okay. Does, so how that much does sense? that cost? How much does it cost? It's on the auction house. So I could, I, could, I could literally do a flip from one auction house to the other. So for instance, my, my little friend, <laughs> my she little friend rooster, yes. at an auction house, he is a taxidermy rooster um, in perfect condition. I bought him for $12.50 plus buyer's premium, $14. I could send him to another auction house that happens on Saturday. Uh, now the auction house I got him from has no online bidding, um, and it, no, it doesn't do a lot of marketing. His email list isn't that big, so I can get some really cool stuff. Like I got the urology books there too, right? Okay. So I could literally drive to another auction house and drop this guy off, and get probably a hundred bucks for him at that auction house. And the auction house I take him to, I've negotiated a lower commission of about thirty percent. So you can go anywhere between twenty-five and thirty-five percent at auction houses. Okay. But if you bring them enough stuff, you can negotiate. You can negotiate the um, the the uh, com commission down. Okay. So, so even at thirty five percent, though, you've 
you've sold that rooster for Done, $65. Yeah. You bought it for 15. So you've made a profit of 50 bucks. And I didn't really do anything, right? right? If I wanted to, right? So you could go to auctions and, and you know, an auction, you want to go, if you can find an auction that's happening on a holiday or when a football game is happening, go uh -huh. to it. Go to it. Because all Buy the wives go, for the wives go to the auction, right? No, no, no. Nobody goes. Oh, I see. So the football game one nothing is... nothing to do with gender. Either. Nobody goes, okay. right? So it's like shooting fish in the barrel. Uh, okay. And you buy, buy a bunch of stuff, cherry pick some stuff out that you're going to put up on eBay, repackage everything um, into box lots, and send it to another auction. Auction house to auction house flips. Flip. Now, I just realized I did not have the Q&A open. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, <laughs> so we only have two questions in there, but I just noticed. I know. I go pretty fast. It's hard <laughs> to get so questions in. I get it. Like my mind is like reeling and spinning. There's so many uh, possibilities here. So, um, and, and I've covered a lot of these things and, and then some more in this. Um, if you go to easyauctionprofit.com, it's a free download, it's a PDF. Um, Cordelia, Cordelia made me do it. Is that backwards on the screen? Um, no, and I was happy I can to. I read it. So, it's fine. And we I, can I created, go ahead and do it. Yeah. Yes, easyauctionprofit.com. And I created this for you. I just made That's this a for you. Yay. So I think it's for you and, and for, for the folks on this call and for the scanner, all the scanner monkeys out there. Awesome. Yeah, enjoy. And anyone, I mean, you, because this, this yeah. show is actually going to be public, so anybody can go oh, to the site and get Oh, them. yeah, yeah, pass it on. But I mean, I created it because I knew Cordelia ha would have a lot of her followers on there, and um, I wanted to give scanner monkeys something to, you guys, something to... Um, Download and, and read through instead of trying to remember everything I said. Uh. Why are you saying you're you're awesome? You're awesome. Thank you. I just want one of those aqua mugs. That's all. <laughs> Bring one to Denver. This oh. I only have one. I actually bought this on eBay. I was looking for a monkey mug and I saw this and I love it. And this is my show mug. But I this oh is like look a product tail. that we produce. Yeah, look at this tail. You need to private label those, girl. You think so? All right. I'll have to look at the bottom of the thing and see. Yeah, how many people would how many people would buy that in the chat? Just thumbs up. Would you buy a scanner monkey mug, right? How cute is that? Because I mean we have like mugs yeah. that just have our logo on it, but they're kind of boring. Yeah, this is cute. You need to private label this. We'll okay. Partner with you. On that. All right, Barbara gave me homework. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody I'm meeting with this week is giving me homework. No, you don't have exactly. to. Do that. No, it's good. It's it's good because I've been complaining that I didn't know what to do next, and then people are like, "Here's your homework." I'm like, "All right, I guess I know what to do next now." <laughs> so, um, Carol has an idea for another domain name for you. She says it's available, so she's going to PM you that. Oh, one. thank you, thank you, thank you. Because I just registered that today or yesterday, trying to put all this together. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Um. So. Here's the questions. Don asks, how much of the inventory that you look at is, oh, you already covered this, new versus used, and how much of it is like a UPC item that you get a lot of or like just a one-up with the rooster? Okay, so those are, those are questions that don't have an answer. You're asking me how many. There are no, that's the thing about auctions. There aren't any guidelines. There aren't any. Every single auction, you're going to find the exact same quantity of the exact same SKU. That's not how it works. It's not like buying wholesale or you don't have control over the product that you're going to find. You do not have control. You just need to get on the auction sites and preview every auction near you on their websites. Preview the stuff that they have. And if they have enough stuff that it's worth going live to, then go live because here's what happens. A lot of the people who bid online, they're a little bit lazy. Mm -hmm. Or they can't make it, or they're going out to dinner when the bidding's ended and they, they can't get that last bid in, whatever. I, I'd say I'd say 75 to 80% of the time, if I'm at a live auction bidding against someone online, I win the bid because they're not in front of their computer when that bid comes up. So if you see something that you really want you can make money on, go to the auction. Okay. Because, you, you, yeah, you, you have a better chance of winning the bid. So I feel like we could do a whole other show about my next question, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it anyway. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> Bring it on. We are getting to the end of the hour, so you actually, you can be free if you want, or you can stick with us and answer a few more questions. Well, I'm going to stick okay. with you uh, for, I can go about 15 minutes after okay. because I'm, I'm on an auction tonight, and oh, uh, about, okay. 20, so we gotta, okay, uh, about 20 minutes is when my, and I, I, we could talk about sniping if we wanted to, but we'll do that next time, because I'm going to be sniping my last minute bids on this auction. Okay. On this well, we're going to let you do that. So I can do another question. 15 minutes. Go ahead. 
talk, can you talk a little bit about how you formed your Facebook group? Because yeah. you have a active group of people who buy your furniture on Facebook. And I think people... Barbara's like, Funky Treasure. That. It's not just... Uh, and, and now I can leverage them. It's Barbara's Funky Treasure. So it's group slash Barbara's Funky Treasure. Oh, I'm okay, sorry. I'm gonna put a, I'll put a link. Did you copy and paste that link? Yeah, I'll go ahead and put it in. Go ahead. Keep talking. Don't worry about the link. I got that. Okay, link. thanks. So I'll have to put <laughs> Thank you. So it's Funky it's, Treasure. It's in the chat. Right. Um, funky Treasure. That's it. Right. Thank you. Um, yeah, so what I did was uh, there, are, there are Facebook groups called swap groups in this area. They're right. like online flea markets. Mm -hmm. So I created my group, and then I, I will post an item on my group and then share it to the other groups. Right. And I would copy and paste the description on those other groups, mm -hmm. but my post will show up in their groups. And then when people want a, a good percentage of the people will click on that and end up back on Barbara's funky treasure. That's one, two, I have Barbara funky treasure cre uh, cards, of course. So when I do anything, when I go to auctions, when I have a yard sale, anything, everybody gets a Barbara's funky treasure, join my group. Here's the pitch. I mean, it's not a pitch. It's true. Join my group and you get first dibs on anything I get, it right. goes on Barbara's Funky Treasure first, and my followers get first dibs over any other group, okay? When I do Craigslist ads, I put at the bottom, or offer up, I have this little footer at the bottom of my ads, see all my other funky stuff at, and then link back to Barbara's Funky Treasure. So wherever I'm advertising my items, I always drive traffic back to Barbara's Funky Treasure, and that builds that following. And I'm the only one who posts in Barbara's Funky Treasure. It's only my stuff. Right. There's, no inter there's only interaction of people posting, uh, commenting, take this, take this, take this. Okay. And I'm, I'm kind of looking through it. It really is like just a mix of stuff. It's some. Well, now I've started adding, now that I'm in Amazon, mm -hmm. right? I started adding my whole st wholesale stuff on there. Right. And it's a mix of stuff. It's whatever I find at auctions or whatever I find at liquidation. Those markers will probably, I'll put a bunch of them up on Funky Treasure. Right. Because if I can sell them locally within 48 hours, I, I get all my money that I want to buy. <laughs> right? I already saw stuff here that I want to buy. Zombie mugs. I love the picture of your glass bowl that has your cat in it. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. She's my little she's my little quality control girl. Yeah. And you have kind of a mix of like super nice looking stuff and sort of like not as nice looking stuff. And I guess yeah. it all sells, huh? Well, that could be that I bought out like you know, somebody going out of business or somebody who's liquidating their store or something, and I have to buy it all to get a great price. Um, so whatever, it just goes up on Funky Treasure. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, now I see the zombie mugs. <laughs> um, so that's her group. Um, Carol's got, like, domain fever, and she's giving you more ideas. You rock, Carol. Um, thank you. Now, so the other groups don't mind. So if you're in the local swap group, they don't mind that you're sharing from your group. We have to be respectful. Every swap group has their own rules. Uh, I have such a great relationship with a couple of the biggest ones because, one, I provide them with great content. Right. I provide them with great stuff. And they people go to these sites to find cool stuff. Right. So, you know, I reach out to the admins and I say, hey, here's what I'm doing. And, you know, I don't try to just do under anything underhanded or, or whatever. Um, so, yeah, no, I don't have any problems. Okay. Um, I think that's a good rule of thumb in general is if you're going to be in somebody else's group or community that you ask permission and just kind of reach out because um, I know even in Scanner Monkey, we have people that just post stuff and it's like, just ask us, just ask us and then we can discuss it. So that's great. Um, so I love how creative you are with finding ways to sell your stuff that kind of works for your life. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, now that you're doing FBA, because it's kind of, it's sort of new. You've only really been doing it for about six or eight months. Not even. Um, September, October, October, November, December. Are December, you March, still going to be doing like Craigslist and Facebook, or are you trying to move more towards at only FBA? Or are you still kind of keeping your marketplaces diverse? You know, it's kind of like a Tourette syndrome because <laughs> I just bought some stuff the I went to an end tonight. You know, I, I this afternoon I found this auction. I wasn't even looking. I was like, oh, I'll see what Auction Nation has. It's more like I'm having lunch and it's taking a break from whatever I'm working on and I go to an auction site. Darn it. Oh, 
cash, darn it, right? <laughs> or if it's like too good to be true and I can go buy out this entire thing for a great price and flip it. So it's, it's a really easy way, I think, to generate some cash. So I can't imagine I won't be doing it, but I'm going to scale back on things like large pieces of furniture because my back hurts. I keep, uh, I've thrown it out multiple times. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's really, it's, it can get, it, it got pretty bad earlier this week. Actually, I was kind of on the floor and not able to move. So um, I'm, I'm over that part of it. I did really well with furniture though. So please don't be, it's just me. If you have a guy, if you got a dude and you partner with your husband or your dude to do this, it's great because they can do the lifting. I'm doing everything, um, you know, loading the trucks and unloading the trucks and, wow. and, um, that's not something I want to do anymore, but it's an iteration of as my business grows. It worked. This stuff worked really, really well for me after the crash. And yeah. this is what I needed to do. I needed to have something physical in my hands to sell. Yeah. I'm cycling back around to what my, you know, what I've been good at in my life, which is creating content um, from being a, a journalist to creating the content for the B2B uh, research company and reports company and directories. So uh, I'm now applying those skills to the, um, the online sellers market. I have directories of wholesalers and I created the 2016 East seller marketing calendar. Uh, right. just got a directory back. I still have a, a team of uh, researchers and writers in China that have worked for me for about 12 years. Uh, I know that's pretty long in China, right? Um, but it's the same piece. Of, so they know how I work. They know the quality of content I want. And they just came back with an, um, an eco directory for me. Companies that sell in the eco space, uh, health and beauty, cosmetics uh, or health and personal beauty and food. So they just brought that directory back. I have to look through it because I, I um, quality control all of my products. Um, and I'm going to be doing an auction course. Yeah. I have to, yeah. It's going to be webinars and I might even do some, you know, live auction house training. I'm not sure how I'm going to put it together yet. I, I know the content, but the delivery, um, I think you said you'd be able to Point me in the right direction. I'm happy to help if I can. Yeah. Yeah. Do some video and figure out what platform to use. And uh, but I will definitely be putting together and Scanner Monkeys. All anybody listening to this is going to get the Scanner Money Monkey discount. Well, the Scanner Monkey members will get a scanner. I'm sorry. The okay. Scanner Monkey members will get a Scanner Monkey discount. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know the price point yet, and I don't know the discount, but I will take care of the Scanner Monkeys out there. We will definitely be uh, keeping everybody up to date about that. So um, that I think that. I love, you know, um, the last few shows we've done have been totally new ways of doing this business. And it's so fascinating because we all say we're online sellers, but it's like a million things you could sell and a million ways you could acquire the product. And um, it's so cool that you can find ways that work for you and that you're excited about and you do auctions and um, our guest last week specialized in licensed t-shirts and like just there's so many like little niche things and uh, it can result in millions of dollars, you know, and uh, I, th I think it's a wonderful thing. So thank you so much for sharing. I, I could keep talking to you, but I, I feel I'm starting to feel the pressure of the auction. I know you have to go. We're good. I'm watching the clock. I know exactly so, what. You know exactly what's going on. Yeah, I've um, got another screen over here that shows me where the bids are. So, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, if I don't, if I don't win, there's a bunch of markers and whiteboards. Who cares? Whatever. Not a big. There's always another auction. Like you know, tomorrow. It's probably four. <laughs> All right. It's more than Sunday. It's it's just stuff, guys. It's just stuff. Can I leave one bit of advice? Yeah. Like leave on a on a one piece of. I like to give Ooh. people actions to um, before I leave. Uh, and now I just forgot my train of thought. So say something else. So I'll remember it again. Okay. So I was going to ask you a couple, I have a couple questions. The first question is, um, what are some of the pitfalls? Like if somebody's new to auctions, what are, what are paying some things you're careful of? Paying too much, paying too much. And you can get caught up in, um, so I would highly recommend if you really want to understand auctions, go, go to YouTube and type in, um, how to be an auctioneer. And watch the videos teaching auctioneers to do what they do. And you will learn what their, their tactics are to manipulate you emotionally and energetically to pay more. And I will teach you in my course how to counteract those effects. I just did it Saturday and I won this great patio bench from somebody because I interrupted the flow of an auctioneer and had the guy bid against me thinking he was going to get it at a certain price because of the interrupt. And then I hit it with the snipe bid and got it. So there, I will teach you the psychological tactics to 
Uh, you can intimidate people just by looking at them. Uh, I'm pretty tall and I'm a girl. And uh, if I buy, if I, so I, I, I'm sorry, this is what it is, it's business. But if right. I'm at a tool auction and there are a bunch of guys bidding on the tools and there's one that I want because I know I can make money on it, I will wait, 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 wait. I will stand there in the group of guys. And then when it comes up to that item and I bid on it, all the guys have this interrupt like, what, what? Was that a girl? Was that a girl bidding on that? <laughs> And guys want to let me have the bid. They right. want, they want to be a gentleman. Yeah. So thank you very much, guys. And I say thank you and everything. But there are things that you can do that if you want an item, it's not illegal. It's not immoral. It's not hurtful. You thank the guys afterwards. Right. Say, you know, I appreciate you letting me have that, right? You can you, you just be respectful about it. Um, but that's all stuff I'll teach. That's like next level auction stuff. <laughs> just be careful so, not to get caught up in the emotionalism of bidding. Don't let yourself get, don't let you eat your ego. That would be my final, yeah, that's it right there. Do not let your ego be engaged. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to bid, outbid him. And I'm, how dare he snipe me? How, don't, it's all about the numbers. Okay. It's all about the numbers. If the number doesn't work, don't bid. Um, then I have one more. If you had to sort of, um, what I love about your story is how you're always thinking of new things and kind of, so if you had to say, and this is more, I guess, of a philosophical question, what are, what is the one or some of the few characteristics that have helped you continue to grow and evolve even in the face of, of channel, of challenges and obstacles? Okay. So that led me back to what I wanted to say before and I forgot. First of all, and let's, let's talk from the heart here, which I try to always do, but then I get, you know, talking about business and, but from the heart, it's uh, what's the worst that could happen? Mm -hmm. I crash and burn. I lose everything. Okay. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt looking for a mug. So what's the worst that could happen? Right. I, I bounce back. I bounce back. You know, I do whatever I need to do to take care of business and take care of myself and, and, and that's it. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? It's already happened. <laughs> I, mean, really, I mean, financially, right? Um, right. So here's what, I, here's what I want to leave you guys with, cross market. Ask yourself, what assets do I have that I can cross market between those assets? So I have my Facebook page, I have auction buying, I have Craigslist, I have OfferUp, I have Amazon, I have eBay if I wanted it. How can I, uh, I have posh linens, so you know I'm sourcing things to sell on eBay that I can also sell to my posh linens locally, right? You know that's happening. Because then when a wholesale shipment comes in, how long is it going to take me to get that money back from Amazon? Let's say I can ship it back out the same day, and it's got a really great rank. I still got to wait two weeks for the payment, right? So if I can hold, I hold all of, a little bit of inventory of everything I buy back wholesale and sell it locally, to these groups that I've already built up, these groups of, of followers, so that I can recoup my investment as quickly as possible. So ask yourself, what assets do you have that you can cross leverage between those assets to increase your sales? When you're selling something at a yard sale, somebody comes to pick something up off of a Facebook group, you're gonna cross sell them to something else. Like if somebody picks up bed sheets, I'm gonna show them the comforters. Right. Right? I'm going to show them blankets or something else that's related to that item. Right. So think outside the box is what I would say. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Barbara, for coming oh. on. It's such a pleasure to meet you, and I'm so excited that I get to hang out with you in person next week. Are you bringing the rooster? <laughs> uh, he won't fit in my overnight bag. This time, but... No, I'm not bringing the rooster, but I had the okay. he had the final, right? <laughs> I might have my monkey with me. <laughs> That's pretty cute. Um, the, we are talking about the Rocky Mountain Reseller.